Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, this stuff. Kydex. So, today we're going to make a knife sheath from Kydex. Now, what is Kydex? Kydex is a material, uh, a plastic material that's classified as a thermoplastic, meaning that you can heat it up and kind of squash it into shape, and whatever shape you mold it into, it's going to retain that shape once it cools down. So we'll be using that quality to make a really cool, simple, durable sheath today. All right, so Kydex has a lot of very attractive qualities for sheath makers. First, it's just very durable. Uh, it resists oil, water, solvents, all kinds of stuff, and it's just kind of like the old Timex, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. In addition, it's pretty cheap. Uh, the material we're going to use today costs about four bucks a square foot right now, uh, and uh, you know it doesn't take a ton of skill to make really pretty cool stuff with it. So, let's get started. So a couple of months ago, I made a knife with a handle made from micarta that I made from scratch. Today, we'll take that same knife and give it a very simple Kydex sheath. There are a ton of ways of making sheaths from Kydex, some of which use one piece of Kydex, some of which use two pieces, and some even more than that. But today, we'll do the simplest, the one-piece method. So here's a piece of Kydex sheet. At the time of this video, you can buy it for about four bucks a square foot. It comes in a multitude of colors from tactical black to hot pink. It's also available in a variety of thicknesses, generally 0 0.06, 0 0.08, and 0.9 inches thick. For sheaths, I prefer 0 0.06 and 0 0.08. We'll be using black 0 0.08 for this one. Kydex generally comes with one smooth surface and one textured surface and that textured surface is generally the one you're going to want on the outside of the sheath. The main piece of equipment I'm going to use is a Kydex press. I made this one myself, but you can buy them for less than a hundred bucks. I may do a video later on about how to make one, but for this video we'll just start by taking the press for granted and move right on. We'll also use a heat gun. Now you can glue Kydex, but it tends to shear on glue lines, so most Kydex sheaths use fasteners, either rivets or screws like these little Chicago screws. In this case, I'll use small quarter inch eyelet rivets. You can buy all this stuff from various knife making supply stores. Just Google Kydex or Kydex sheaths and go to town. So first, we'll need to lay everything out and figure out how much material we need. Basically, it's pretty simple. You just need enough to cover the knife, plus, oh, about three quarters of an inch extra around the outside. There's also a long piece at the top, which will form the belt loop. What you're aiming to do with Kydex is to form a snap fit, which happens by finding some sort of little indentation or depression in the knife that you can use to retain the blade. It'll all depend on the design of your blade. In this case, I'm using this little scooped out area at the front of the handle. Notice I'm laying it out with the textured side down. Once I get it all figured out, it's off to the bandsaw. It's always better to cover more of the knife than you really need to. You can always take off more, but you can't put it back. This will be a right hand sheath, so I want the long side here. Once it's cut out, I always lay everything out on the press one more time just to make sure I know exactly where I'm going and minimize my usual tendency to screw everything up. Now I'll heat the Kydex. A lot of people use toaster ovens. I'll be using my heat treating oven set to 340 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll need to experiment with whatever you use to heat the material to find out what settings work for you. It takes about five minutes to heat up, give or take, in my oven. You just want to keep an eye on it and make sure you don't let it burn. Once it starts sort of rolling up around the edges, that usually means it's ready to go. You want it to feel soft and floppy, about the consistency of a cooked lasagna noodle. As soon as it's ready, I'll take it quickly to the press. 
I always leave the knife sitting there on the press in exactly the position that I'm going to use. Again, don't forget to make sure that the textured side goes down. I lay it out quickly because the material loses heat fairly fast. I pull and adjust and yank a little to make sure the spine of the blade is right flush up against the crease. Then I close the press as quickly as possible, adjust a little more if necessary, and clamp the crap out of it. Then I just leave it. An important feature of Kydex that you need to be aware of is that the material has memory, meaning that if you reheat it or take it off the press before it's completely cool, it'll start losing definition as it tries to return to a flat sheet again. So don't be in a rush to get it out of the press. Especially in the summer when it's hot, give it about 10 minutes to cool. If it feels hot to the touch when you open up the press, close it up again, clamp it again. So there's your sheath. Check the fit. It should be really hard to get the knife out. You should be able to turn it upside down and shake it hard without the thing falling out. If it can fall out at this point, you need to try the whole thing over again. If everything looks good, just trim it up a little. Leave plenty of room for the rivets or screws. Like I said, they sell cement that you can use to bond the material together. But if you do everything right, it's not really necessary on this particular design. The rivets will do all the work. You can trim the sheath using a cutter on a Dremel, but I like using my belt grinder. Notice how it turns to hot goo as you blast through it. Nothing wrong with that. Once you have the rough shape, you're ready to form the mouth of the sheath. As I said, I intentionally make it a little oversized. I'll insert this little piece of wood to give myself clearance on the belt grinder. I'm just aiming to give it a pleasing shape and allow the knife to snap in and out without too much resistance. Once I'm happy with the general shape of the opening, I'll gild the lily. Now this isn't really necessary, but you can do it if you want. Using a heat gun, yes, that's a heat gun, not my wife's hair dryer, I'll use a piece of wood to restrict the heat a little and heat just the lip. Then I'll just bend it the tiniest bit. You can skip this step if you want, but it makes me feel good. Okay, time for the belt loop. I'll form it by heating this tab at the top with the heat gun and then bending it around a wooden form. The key thing to understand here about the belt loop is that it has to clear the back of the sheath which is kind of rounded. If you just bend it over and squash it, it won't be nice and square. So the form I use has a scooped out portion to give the right clearance and still keep it nice and square. If you don't scoop it out like this, that belt loop is going to stand out too far and it's going to look kind of goofy and the whole thing is going to hang too far off your belt. This is being made for a one and three quarter inch belt so the form is one and three quarters of an inch wide. Very simple. Before forming the belt loop, I'll measure it, trim this tab at the top, and radius the corners. Now always be careful with the heat gun. It can very quickly heat portions of the sheath that you don't want heated, and then there goes all your hard work. You gotta start over again. I have to take the knife out to get this little portion right here heated evenly but I'll slide the knife back in before I fold the tab over and form the belt loop. Otherwise, the fit to the knife will likely get lost at this point right at the top. Once I get it all softened up, I very quickly bend it and slap it back in the press again. This will cool pretty quickly. Then I pull it out, hit the end with a little more heat, and bend a small tab at the bottom to retain the loop on my belt.
test it out. Everything works fine. Next, it's time to add the rivets. Positioning the rivets is basically a question of how tight you want the opening to be. You can put a clamp on there or hold it with your fingers and sort of test where you want to set that rivet so that you'll have the optimum amount of retention. Now rivets come in several sizes, but here I'll be using quarter inch rivets. Very simple to use. Just drill a quarter inch hole for each rivet, then slide the rivets in and flare them. You can flare the rivets in any number of ways. You definitely want to avoid these cheap ass rivet squeezer things. Total waste of money. If you do a lot of these, you'll want to buy a pair of rivet setters or rivet dies and use an arbor press. I just made my own rivet flaring dies on my lathe, but you can buy a set for, I don't know, 30 bucks or something like that. I didn't show how I flared the rivet, but basically I just put the bottom die in a vise, slide the kydex over the post on the die, pop the top die over the rivet, and give it a sharp whack with a hammer. Nothing complicated. You don't even need an arbor press. Do a couple of test runs on a scrap piece to make sure your technique works, and you're good to go. Now I'll do a final trim on the belt grinder to make sure everything's even, that the corners have nice radiuses and so on. Then I'll head to the Dremel and use this buffing wheel to soften up all the edges. Careful, this thing builds up heat really fast and can literally melt right through the kydex. Again, practice on some scraps till you get the hang of it. And there you have it. Looks pretty decent, works great. Once you get the basic system down, you'll see that Kydex is really versatile. You can mount tech locks on them, Molly compatible fasteners, screws, thongs, whatever. But this method is super simple and it works great. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you can find more of my work. You'll also find plenty more videos there that you can't find on YouTube with very, very detailed information about all aspects of Japanese blade making. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades.